Yep, that's me. I bet you're all wondering how I got in this situation. It all started when some biking folks came to town and got me all excited and curious. I ran outside, only it turns out that a bike wheel to the face looks like it hurts something fierce. I thought I was going to get the old yeller treatment for sure, but Ed and I are still good buddies. He was more mad at those young folks and visited a kindly old woman to help him summon the demon of vengeance from a pumpkin patch. But that pumpkin head was causing a mighty big ruckus and had to be stopped with a bullet to the head. I think I'm going to sit out the sequel, because if there's more demons in that pumpkin patch, I'm going to have to find a new spot to bury my bones. <laughs> Thanks for listening, y'all. That's the dumbest way I've ever seen that movie summed up. Lord knows how you'd describe the sequel. While the first Pumpkinhead wasn't a box office smash, it quickly became a big enough cult hit that there's gotta at least be a direct-to-video sequel, so in 1994, we got Pumpkinhead 2 Blood Wings. Where there's no Ed Harley this time, and definitely no Billy, but we still need to keep the links between Pinhead and Pumpkinhead alive. So it does feature Andy Robinson from Hellraiser, and originally the director was even going to be Tony Randall of Hellbound Hellraiser 2, but it went through some delays, so taking over as director was Jeff Burr, previously of sequels like Stepfather 2 and Leatherface Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. It's in the category of sequels where the director did didn't like the first movie, but did the sequel anyway. Though I'm guessing this won't be as crazy as Exorcist 2 The Heretic. Here, I don't know, some dopey teenagers resurrect Pumpkinhead, who has a son, I guess, when they should have just stayed home and played the video game tie-in instead. I hear great things. Pumpkinhead is getting vengeance so fierce it has to be live. The previous director, Stan Winston, had no involvement with this one, but there's still good effects this time out, as it's done by KNB Effects Group, and the sinister music this time is from Jim Manzi, who also did music for Stepfather 2 and Leatherface. And I like the opening theme here, I can see it being stuck in my head. While I'm settling in for one hell of a supporting cast, there's Amy Dolan's Gloria Hendry of Black Belt Jones and Live and Let Die, Soleil Moon Fry of Punky Brewster, Linnea Quigley, and the first brother Roger Clinton, brother of President Clinton. It was too late to get Billy Carter, even though I'm sure there's a lot of characters in this who drink nothing but Billy beer. I mean, I've always got a can on me. Like the first, it opens up in the 50s, where we now meet the witch Miss O.C. Since the dog isn't around in this one, they've decided to opt for a mutant boy named Tommy. I am not an animal! I am a pumpkin! I sense bullies nearby. I'm calling it that this will be a better Porky's sequel than Porky's Pimpin' Pee-wee. Shouldn't you idiots be doing the twist or something? Let's finish this thing once and for all. Henry Bowers had a lot of time to kill before the formation of the Losers Club. To think the old witch could have saved Tommy from this beatdown, if only she wasn't running in slow motion. You're a witch, just fly there. This is less pumpkin head and more dark night of the scarecrow. Looks like we got not a big one, didn't we? And he's pretty too, isn't he? Don't have sex with the pumpkin man. I suppose we can let him down now, boys. Now let's go smash the shit out of Arnie Cunningham's car. We're caught up to the present where Sheriff Braddock is going to have an easy time sheriffing in this town with it being so quiet and all. There's no traffic, no pollution, no gangs. No pumpkin men. What? Uh, sorry, uh, just something from the 50s. Now he's officially ready to be Sheriff Tom Skerritt. Luckily, there's already no good teenagers lurking about. Hey, man, let's spark that joint. By my fire. Oh, great. The villains from a Just Say No ad are hanging out outside the school again. You know my dad is a cop, right? Yes, my name is Jenny McGruff. This is more of a small town this time out, as opposed to there being just a swamp and a couple of shacks and a rundown gas station in the first. 
And there's more small town banter. Don't call me slick. I didn't like it in high school and I still don't like it. Do you two need a moment? I have tickets to dinner theater if you want them. This town is so country that I think George Jones is the dentist assistant. And I freaking love who the mayor is. Roger Clinton with Richard Marx's hair. Marie, you got my guitar. Here you go, mayor. Did you cure it? Well, it's tuned. <laughs> what is happening? Now I wish the first movie had a cameo from Neil Reagan. This group of young people is like if Pete from the Buttercream Gang successfully converted them to hooligans. Where's that kiss? Damn, the drunken bikers seemed safer to be around. Thank God the sheriff is here. So I guess uh, school let out early today, huh? We graduated 10 years ago. And why is she mad at him for showing up? First you tell me to make friends, and then you tell me you don't like the friends I make? Um, do you even like them? And if so, why? I'm kind of curious how Pumpkinhead is gonna show up in this, and when, as it's getting dark out. Damn you, bastard moon! It takes absolutely no time for them to do something stupid. Not even a half mile down the road, and they've already hit someone. Does anybody know who she is? She's nobody. Look, she's just some crazy lady that lives in Fair and Hollow, all right? Have you hit her with your car before? At least they do the right thing. Sure, she's an old witch, but they can at least find her shack and make sure she's okay. It's easy to find. You just have to cross over the pet cemetery. Danny should know better than to go messing around with forces like this. You were literally the lead in Return of the Living Dead 3. Don't worry, they have a witch expert here. Ask Marcy. She knows all about this witch shit. Don't ask me. This stuff is way beyond Ouija boys. Your only expertise is that you have a Ouija board? Um, no, I also own a broom. Is this even the same witch as the first? Leave here. No. My god, that's Lillian Shaven, Joey's grandma on Friends, here to summon a demon to get revenge on Marcy here for punching Joey. Despite all of these signs, they're still hell-bent on taking this vial of blood to the point of assaulting the woman. Miss Marcy curses every one of you. Well, I guess the director isn't a fan of the first, but he's a big fan of Stephen King's Thinner. We'll be right back. They were gonna stop off at Denny's for a late night burger, but it's closed for repairs. Next best option is to, of course, dig up Tommy's body to resurrect him. Come see me at Planet Funk Con on June 28th through the 30th in Davenport, Iowa, where you can get autographed copies of my book, Class of 86, movies, and more. Get your tickets at Planet Funk Con.com. We're back, and hey guys, uh, it's about four in the morning. We've been out here for hours. I think we have school soon. These are the biggest morons I've seen in a horror movie in a while. I guess the revenge is that the witch wants vengeance because they broke into her house, accidentally set it on fire, and conveniently, for no reason whatsoever, dug up Tommy's corpse, who will then turn into Pumpkinhead, where actually the revenge will be against these guys at the beginning. I understood the rules just fine in the first. In this, it's really complicated. I'm surprised Pumpkinhead wasn't summoned in the 50s sequences to get revenge on these shitters. At least the whole force is on the case. Take it to the lab and give it to Delilah. We don't have a lab. But what about the witch? Is she okay? Danny, she's in the hospital. You saw that fire. There's nothing we could have done. Pfft, some witch? Why does she need a hospital? And why is Jenny still hanging out with them? You know I've never heard anyone, don't you? How romantic. Their one-day anniversary. Ernst is keeping tabs on things, though, to fill the sheriff in on the scenes. I seen this red car, convertible. Fast kids rumbling by. I'm the hunted, cause it's back. Don't lie, you found him while walking around as Tinker from Chainsaw 3. Damn, I've been trying for hours to wash the curse off of the car, and it's not working. The sheriff instantly knows that Danny has to be behind this, because duh. You probably heard about that fire last night. Yeah. Yeah, sure, I'm sorry to hear about that old woman. 
I didn't say anything about an old woman, you idiot. He can explain the dent, though. Some dent? How'd it happen? He hit a dog. Don't you go blaming me. I checked out before he all started rolling. But Danny is the son of the judge, so he'll get off. But that doesn't explain why their house is the same location used in Motel Hell. See, what did I tell you? A better Porky sequel than the fourth Porky's. And there is something still hilarious about seeing the witch in the hospital. Oh no, it is happening again. Also, nurse, nurse, more morphine. These visions aren't stopping. Demon is rising. Need more trazodone to get a much better night's rest. Hey, Joe Unger is always up to no good. It's for the best that he's the first one that the monster gets rid of. Pumpkinhead is a bit more man in suit looking in this one than the towering hell beast in the other. There's been some budget cuts this time. There is only two police on the force. But I ain't never seen anything this bad. Hell, you ask me. Another one of them wildcats. Were you just lurking back there? What were you doing behind that bale of hay, Judge? Now they collect the evidence and get all of the pictures dropped off at the one-hour photo in the pharmacy. Pumpkinhead is covering his tracks a little better. He only leaves behind one claw print at each crime scene. We'll talk about it over dinner, where everyone has a poker face. So whatever killed Ernst was also at Miss Osi's place. <laughs> Um, we didn't hit Miss Osi with a car and then set her cabin on fire. I know, sweetie, I know. Go do your homework. They'll be safe. Remember, Danny's dad is the judge. Don't worry about it. I talked to my old man and I won't let anything happen to you. He is slapping Pumpkinhead with an immediate restraining order. At least someone around here knows of the legend. Pumpkinhead? What is that, some kind of a fairy tale? No, it's just what the mayor calls his dick, but he plays a mean guitar. Even Dad remembers the poem that goes along with Pumpkinhead. Guard dogs prowling in the yard won't protect you in your bed. Nothing will from Pumpkinhead. Okay, fine, you can audition for the dinner theater. Just stop monologuing at the table. But meanwhile, in a random dream sequence that reminds me, oh yeah, the first time I saw this, it was on Cinemax back in 94. I'm rooting for the monster. Jenny and Danny are as believable a romance as Bunt and the dog. I believe this romance more with Linnea Quigley and R.A. Mihailov. Why am I watching a love scene with Leatherface from Chainsaw 3? They're either all tied in with the judge, or he's cursed from keeping up his Halloween decorations for too long. The witch was fine with that in the first. But here, if you keep these decorations up long enough, a pumpkin man will show up and kill you. And what's with the soundtrack? Never seen The demon has been summoned to defeat country music singing homewrecker Lurleen Lumpkin. What a week this sheriff has had. It's all coming together now. Wings. That's what it is, you know. Blood wings. Yes, thank you for coming up with the subtitle of the movie. We had to say it at some point, since Pumpkinhead doesn't have wings. They do have a witness this time out. <laughs> What? Where'd you get that? What did you shoot in her? Liquid nicotine. It'll calm her down. Though we get to my favorite characters, the elderly town ladies. Sheriff, people are saying it's some sort of a monster. A demon. Well, the witch is the third player in our bridge club, and she's supposed to make the potato salad at the next potluck. It's still got some themes of the downside of vigilantism for now, as the judge has assembled a posse who can shout, Evil dies tonight the loudest. They're still going with this hookup. I kind of like the fourth guy of the group, though, the one with his arms crossed, who's barely had any lines so far, which is funny because he's played by voice actor Alexander Polinsky. Forget the first one, Pumpkinhead 2 has amazing checking the safety deposit box action. Because he seems like the type who would keep newspaper clippings about Tommy locked in a box and not just randomly in his cabin. Why are you hiding it? It already made the news. The sheriff also ties into this too, as he once happened upon Tommy as well. <laughs> And that 
that's the day I met Ben Stiller going full pumpkin. I want more of this comedy that features Mayor Roger Clinton. Well, let me put it this way. The Loch Ness Monster, the Abominable Snowman, Bigfoot. The way I see it, this thing could put us on the map. Who elected this man? The kids are putting it together themselves. Yep, sure is an empty grave. But uh, he seems more hell-bent on killing the people from 1958. Maybe we're all good. Seriously, he's just killing off the former bullies. Uh, wait, Kane Hodder? So far, we've seen Pumpkinhead kill Leatherface, Michael Myers in the first, and now Jason is on the list? The revenge is Pumpkinhead being pissed that he went direct to video and is killing off all the slasher legends, so he'll be the only remaining horror icon left. And yes, Doug Bradley is in the third film. Let's go ahead and take a break. This time she's injected the witness with too much nicotine, I'm afraid. They woke him for vengeance. To damn the ones that wronged them. The sci-fi original movie Pumpkinhead Ashes to Ashes premieres this Saturday at 9 on Sci-Fi. We're back, people, and the sheriff is figuring out what the audience already knows. Ernst, Byers, now the Knox brothers, they're all somehow tied in together. Yes, they all killed Tommy in the past. Catch up, Sheriff. He hasn't even figured out that his wife is the most famous tutor in town. That's Karen Kay from My Tutor. Why aren't you improving Danny's grades? The judge simply said you gotta sleep with him to keep him out of trouble. The official report was that Tommy hanged himself, which, as this town always had questionable policing, just like how the hospital can't even keep a witch alive. What's going on? What happened? I lost her. Oh, there's no need to cry. She'll be back. <gasps> she just realized it's waffle day in the hospital breakfast menu. Send her up a plate from the kitchen immediately. She came back just to cut to the chase and tell the sheriff everything he needs to know. Your police work is too slow. He's back to get revenge on the judge and his friends. And no joke, Tommy is the son of Pumpkinhead, which I've got some questions about that. Oh, and if there's time, he'll kill the kids too. And when he killed them six boys, he'll go after the kids that burnt me. I like that Pumpkinhead has a priorities list. This is um most like a comedy. The blood wings in the title is referring to the red wing sign at the crime scene as a reference to their high school gang known as the red wings, where the judge, who is the last remaining one who killed Tommy, is passing wisdom on to his son. Hope you got protection, honey. Dad, come on, you know this is a raw dog in a town. I really don't feel sorry for anyone in this. They're all such incompetent assholes that Paul finally speaks up. I saw you. You killed that old woman. He's lying, Jen. No, you're lying. What was your first clue? Now it's feeling like a remake of the first, where Danny is assuming the John D. Aquino role, only with the characters here being a lot more one note. Pumpkinhead is more of a dick here, too. God damn it, just drawing one blood wing on the wall would have been fine. It's gonna take my maid weeks to clean all this up. The set design and cinematography aren't nearly as impressive in this one. The look of it is just stock mid-90s horror movie, but the costuming is still cool. He was scarier in the first, but that doesn't mean that this looks bad. He's still an effective looking monster. The movie as a whole, though, really isn't as good. It strays a bit too far from the world we set up in the first, and even when it does try doing similar plot points, it comes across more like a primetime teen drama on Fox. Really, the teens don't even need to be in this. The main villains should have been the judge and his friends. If they pumped up that part of the story more and got rid of the teenager element, it could have been a bit more focused. The teens feel like a producer's note. 
I would have liked if they played with the small town comedy aspect more, because there really are some funny parts in it when it focuses on the town, even if the town itself, like a lot of things here, made this feel like it's not even the same universe as the first. Hell, if the witch is the one who summoned him because of what the teens did, shouldn't Pumpkinhead be dead since she died? That's pretty much what happened in the first when Ed died. Why question it, though, when we all want to see Danny get it? No! I loved him? How are we going to defeat Pumpkinhead this time? I know, we appeal to his heart, because it is the spirit of Tommy inside of him, so the sheriff talks about the good times and vouches for the innocence of his daughter. See? We're all good. He'll quietly leave now. The judge is okay, is this now a horror film that's pro-angry mob? They all sent him back into the grave, and then they all leave happy? How are bullets now stopping him? And thus we end with Dad solving this mediocre case and finding some old toys to put on eBay. How did it get... And why does Pumpkinhead have a deformed son named Tommy? This is leaving me with way more questions. No, no, don't end. Who had sex with Pumpkinhead? This was just your standard 90s mediocre horror sequel, meant to be watched on cable once, not a total waste of time, and that's about it. Watch it on a double feature with Candyman Farewell to the Flesh for one hell of a bland night. But we'll see what the drop in quality is like when we go from direct to video to made for TV with the 2006 third film, Pumpkinhead Ashes to Ashes. Ah! Oh, this beats the hell out of delivering mail.